Welcome to a special edition of the Angus Report. I'm Clint Mefford. This week, we're bringing you a new look into the beef industry. Ranchers and chefs have more in common than they may think. Chef Jeremiah Bacon and cattle rancher Kevin Yawn traded places for a day. They learned how closely connected they are through Angus cattle and how their work affects the others. On a typical morning in the spring, we're still breeding cows. Nice. We'll breed two cows, and then we're going to go and move some cows. Okay. How about that? On horses. Oh, wow. Have you ever been on a set on a horse? Sure. Yeah, that's great. I, I can't, I'm not, I don't think I can gallop or anything really like nice. that. No, 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 we're not. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to do that. <laughs> chef Jeremiah Bacon came to work with us here on the farm today and actually was my shadow. That was really cold. Yeah, that's neat. It was neat to me just how inquisitive he was of why we're doing something and how we were raising cattle. That's some um, rye grass and weed and oats, kind of a salad bar that the cattle are grazing there. So we had to gather this group of cows this morning. We just try to be real easy and slow, and we got to get out the cows that need breeding. So you got to pick out two out of all these? Yeah. <laughs> they have ear tags in them. We don't find C-146. There's a serious tag. Out. <laughs> so my head hurt me early in the morning. <laughs> this is the cow we're breeding. We make Chatuga to her, then this resulting calf is going to be right across here. We're wanting them to be in the upper percentiles for these different traits. Come over to what you're interested in, both, both marbling and ribeyes in the top 25th percentile. Gotcha think about it this way is that we're able to use the very best genetics in the world. Yeah. So think about what improvements you can make if you can choose right. the very best genetics. It's pretty fascinating just to sort of see kind of daily life on, on the farm, on the ranch. Start off the day looking for the cervix. So that was pretty, pretty intense. <laughs> All right. All right, how was that? That was awesome. Good for you. <laughs> Lots of activities, things I've never done before, so it's a big day for me. All right, Jeremiah. This one's your mouth. She's a good one. Jeremiah, we don't go gather this group of cattle and, and take them off grass and let a new group in. Good <laughs> People want to know where their food's coming from, uh, the process. You know, people, what's this thing with CAB? Man, it's, it's about small ranches. It's about small farms. That's what it's about. I've been to Nebraska, I've been to Montana, and the same dedication, the same follow through, and the same techniques are going on in all these, all these different areas. So it's very impressive. The, the noises they're making right now, they just kind of just fussing a little bit, or were they just kind of? Probably they're fussing because we took them off their green grass. <laughs> Well, they like the shade a little bit. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's gotta be, yeah, it's getting, especially in summertime. Get, get warm enough now we're like, yeah. It was a joy for me to get to show Jeremiah what we do each and every day. And he noticed so many little things that I know that they're there, but sometimes just escape us. He even noticed the wind making waves through the grass or the um, leaves rustling in the trees, the new green leaves. And he was very observant that we take good care of the cattle and that the better they do is the, the better that we do. The hard work, the dedication, the time that it takes to get a product to us, a hundred different things going on, a thousand different things going on that guys have to take care of. Tagging the calf was probably my favorite. Sixty-five pounds. Excited to have Kevin Yon tomorrow with us and show him how we take the product and take it to the finish line. Has anybody ever lost their cell phone in the field and have to go around and look for it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah.
Say hey. How are you? Chris. Good to see you. Tonight I've got your dry aged cowboys. Uh, I've got 12 of those. And tomorrow we'll have some wet aged cows. The beef industry is made up of families. It's not big corporate America that's raising these cattle. It's families just like ours. I don't know if you consider yourselves part of agriculture, but we do consider you very much part of agriculture. We're part of food production and and uh, providing meals for people. And you know what could be more noble than doing that? We do just a little bit of butchering. Hey Dave, you cannot hurt my feelings, okay? Because I'm a beef guy, but I don't know anything about cutting beef. We'll see a few tricks today. So for me, it's all about efficiency. Doing it the same way every single time. Mm -hmm. so see where it's at. We're looking for about 16 ounces. This one's about an ounce over. It's better to be a little bit over. That way we can trim up the steak and we're only gonna lose like an ounce, maybe an ounce and a half. I didn't realize what a precise process it was that the butcher and the chef, they look at every steak as an individual, much like we do cattle. We're right at 16. Yeah. Well, and that one's ready. That one's RTG, ready to go. Ready to go. That's beautiful, yep. isn't it? All You're right. Hired. All right. Good deal. So we'll do probably about 100 people today. We're gonna push this 24 ounce dry aged ribeye. And there's just 12 of those? I've got more, but okay. I'm kind of staggering. All right. So it's a little chef's trick right there. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. This is real nice and tender. Do you realize you have to cut this every single day? Wow. Seriously, right. every day. One day's growth. Wow. A lot of times people will come to the restaurant and they're like, I don't know how the tickets come here and how you get it all out at the same time. I struggle with 10 people at Thanksgiving. So it's all about being organized, being uh, in our systems that we put in place, much like the ones they do at the ranch. This job, you're the facilitator. He's the guy, you want to take care of him. That's your money guy right there. Well, I'm here, I live for that guy. Feels like your backside's on fire, don't it? You get used to it. We're picking up a one and a six. Got one oh six and two. One oh six and two. Side of frog gras. Jalapeno right. cornbread. <laughs> the oak um, runs like a well-oiled machine, and everyone's got a job, and everyone has a um, place, and and I got to experience most all those jobs. It was funny because we got him a big old uh, quarter of ice water, and it was gone. Look at his foot. He did great. He did great. Being the expediter, which is like the point guard that is the liaison between the front of the house and the back of the house. You're basically making sure everybody has what they need in place to get the food to come to the window at the same time. And he did a great job at that. You look all right there. Ready on 22. Our worlds are this far apart. I'm at the beginning, he's almost at the end. Knowing that we're connected is really neat. Woo! Watch that hand. The jackpot. I'm trying to produce the very best product that I can produce. He's trying to prepare the products to be the best eating experience that it possibly can be. And it was very gratifying to me that I could take a certified Angus beef prime ribeye that perhaps came from our farm or others like it and just know that everything that was behind that product, the quality was there and that we didn't miss the finish line. Certified Angus Beef Prime Ribeye. Hope you enjoy. All right. I had a wonderful time trading places. I would do it again in a heartbeat.